Story continued from Utah Raptor Playlist. Dawn over the Blades Pack territory, where a herd of dinosaurs are waking with the rise of the sun. Hippo Draco are closely related to the Iguanodontids, and in many ways look very similar, though they are small for their family. Females can weigh up to 400 kilograms, or males can get a little over half a ton. They are stocky, but also surprisingly fleet of foot, though most of their time they march slowly across the landscape. Much of life in a hippo draco herd is focused around taking care of their young, and at this time of year, they have plenty of juveniles that are around half a meter long. It can take considerable concentration to simply not step on them, but keeping track of them all takes the entire herd's effort. There are many small predators like Marfa Raptor that are plenty patient enough to wait for a perfect moment to snatch away any unguarded infant. Even the waters aren't safe, as just below the surface, crocodilians monitor the shores with even greater patience. The herd of Hippo Draco steadily walk through the shrublands, down to the water to get a drink, purposefully slow so the young can keep up. There is a rustling behind them, and the rearmost herd members turn their heads to see a threat to both young and old. A group of Utah Raptor have broken cover and are running straight for the rear of the Hippo Draco herd, the six meter theropods pounding through the foliage. Alarm calls ring out and the herd begins to run. While many flee simply for self preservation, others move to shield the youngsters, putting themselves between them and the massive dromaeosaurs. One of the adults is held back since the juveniles are much slower than the larger herd members, and this costs her dearly. Two Utah Raptor jump on her, forcing the Hippo Draco to the ground. She struggles, but two more pile on before twin sets of jaws bite down on her head and neck. The tiny Hippo Draco she was guarding run to try and catch up with the herd, but there is nothing between them and the remaining Utah Raptor. Four of them move past the pinned adult and dart after the fleeing infants. As they cry out for help, each of the carnivals grabs one in their jaws and pulls them into the air. The cries of terror quickly turn to screams of pain. It is then that some of the Hippo Draco stop running and turn to look back. Normally it would be too late for the adults to save the court juveniles, but the Utah Raptor didn't eat or kill the young Hippo Draco. They wanted them alive for a specific reason. Like some modern predators, the Utah Raptor sought to bring the infants back to their lair and give them to their young so they may practice hunting in a controlled environment. It may seem cruel, but it is an important learning experience for young Utah Raptor. For now, the Utah Raptor just have to get their victims back to the lair, but none of them have noticed that the formerly fleeing Hippo Draco have now all stopped and turned to face them. Hearing the cries of their young, the females let out aggressive howls and stomp on the ground. A few seconds later, the males join in, and then they charge the dromaeosaurs. Despite the carnivores being far better armed than the herbivores, the males weighed about the same, and that was enough. One of the Utah Raptors turned just in time to see a male hippo Draco charging him angrily. They collided and the predator was sent through the air briefly before tumbling end over end across the ground. The Hippo Draco meant to save the juvenile trapped in the carnival's jaws, but the impact and the roll only ended up killing it instead. As the battered Utah Raptor got to his feet, the others looked back and saw the whole herd was charging them. They jumped up and flapped their arms trying to intimidate the herbivores, but it didn't work. With the tables turned, the dromaeosaurs ran back the way they came, passing the other members of their pack that had pinned the female Hippo Draco, who upon seeing their comrades fleeing, did the same. They vanished into the forest, taking the four juveniles with them. The Hippo Draco stopped their charge, but still wailed at the retreating predators. To their surprise, the female Hippo Draco that had been attacked first was still alive. She was badly wounded, but with the help of her herd, she could potentially make a full recovery. Story continued after the facts section of the video.
Hello fellow travellers and welcome back. Today we will be breaking down another early Ornithischian dinosaur, Hippodrago. The first and only remains of Hippodrago were discovered in 2004 in the Yellow Cat member of the Sedare Mountain Formation of the US state of Utah. It was named in 2010, the genus name meaning horse dragon in reference to its horse-like skull, and the species name being Scutidens meaning shield tooth, in reference to the shape of its tooth crowns. It lived during the early Cretaceous, between 139 and 134 million years ago. Hippodraco was an Ornithischian dinosaur, being an early branching genus in the Ankylopelexia clade, closely related to Camptosaurus from the late Jurassic, and Iguana Colossus, which it lived alongside. As you can probably tell, it has many physical similarities to Iguanodon, which was a fairly close relative. The holotype of Hippodraco is estimated to have grown to 4.5 meters in length, stood 1.5 meters tall, and weighed between 220 and 450 kilograms. However, due to the very large orbitals of the skull, it was concluded that this individual was still immature when it died. So full-grown adults of this genus were likely considerably larger, Analysis of the vertebra indicate that the body had a typical iguanodont shape and body plan, with it being gracile, and either bipedal or facultatively quadrupedal. The discovery of Hippodranco not only gives us an insight into how these Ornithischians developed throughout their lifetime, but also helps show how the family was evolving during the early Cretaceous. As it seems at this time, American members of the family were more basal, while their cousins in Europe were more derived. In its own environment, Hippodraco occupied the mid-level browser and grazer niche, while nodosaurs like Estonia were low browsers. Then the much larger Iguana Colossus were high browsers. And above them all were the sauropods such as Siderosaurus and Moabosaurus. Though plenty of small theropods like Martharaptor have been found in this formation, they are all almost universally known from fragmentary remains, with quite a few not even being capable of identification. Of course, the best known threat to Hippodraco was Utahraptor, which likely hunted ornithopods on a regular basis. If you want to learn more about the dinosaurs from the Sedair Mountain Formation, please view my Utahraptor playlist if you haven't already. That's about all there is to say on Hippodraco. It was likely a common sight in its environment, being a medium-sized herbivore. But only one individual has been found, I hear you say. That is true. But we must remember that the fossil record is not an accurate record of how many animals were in an environment. It is simply a record of what died in specific locations, and it is extremely rare that any animal ever fossilizes. Plus, they have to die or be moved to locations that even have a chance of fossilizing, such as deltas, floodplains, shallow seas, and some rivers and lakes. But what do you think of Hippodraco? And for my question of the week, which of the species listed before do you believe could have been the most numerous? What lesser known dinosaur would you like me to do a breakdown on next? And until then, please like, share, subscribe, and please enjoy the rest of the narrative section. Strider and the group he had been hunting with returned to the pack's lair and the three that still had live Hippodraco juveniles walked to where the youngsters were hiding and dropped the live food before them. Some of the youngsters didn't react, but others were immediately eager to hunt something that was alive. The adults monitored them, making sure none of them got hurt and none of the Hippodraco escaped. But Strider, who had the dead Hippodraco, moved on. Not so he could eat his catch, but so he could deliver it to someone. Walking past some of the resting members of the Blades, Strider went straight for a female that he was interested in. Her name was Falcon, and Strider was taking a huge risk in courting her, as she was one of the daughters of the Pax Alphas, Claymore and Nadashi. As he was not a fully recognized member of the clan, they may not approve, but he was confident that Falcon would approve. She was laying down as he approached her, and didn't even lift her head until he stood almost over her. She looked up at him, and Strider lowered his head and placed the dead Hippodrago 
in front of her. As he did this, he spread both of his arms out to show her his feathers. With this, he took a few steps back, his tail raised high and his head low, a display meant to show off his plumage and submit himself before her. Falcon looks at the offering before her, and then up at Strider. They are the same age, and it is the mating season, but no male has been brave enough to court her yet. Not just because of her position in the pack, but because when males expose themselves like this, they put themselves at great risk if the female doesn't like them. Steadily, she rose to her feet and looked over this new male, having never taken notice of him before. She looks at his feathers and sniffs him, using each sense to judge his health. When she takes one step towards him, however, an angry shriek comes from across the field, and all of the blades pack turn to the source, even Strider. It was Saber, a more senior member of the pack, and it seemed he wasn't happy with the idea of Strider courting Falcon. Saber was one of the initial members that Strider and his brothers encountered, and at first he seemed pleased to boost the pack's numbers. But this turned out to be a facade, because Saber was a bully, nothing more. He only wanted new males so he could have members lower than himself to push around, along with any younger or smaller pack members. Ironic, because despite his years in the clan, he was near bottom of the group, as it seemed the majority of the pack merely tolerated him and his violent outbursts. This especially included the females, as none of them had ever paired with him, but that didn't stop him now from trying to get in Strider's way. The slightly smaller raptor walked right up to Strider and hissed in his face, flexing his claws trying to start a fight with the younger male. Strider knew he only had two options, back off or fight. His gaze turned to the Alphas. They were watching, as was every other member of the pack, but they didn't seem to think this was a serious enough situation to intervene. He then looked to the second in command, Dagger, who he trusted the most in the clan. Dagger seemed to almost smirk, as if to egg Strider on. Did he want him to fight? Falcon herself glared at Saber. She would never pick him as a mate. But the angry male didn't even acknowledge her. He just stared down Strider. Finally, the young Utah Raptor made his choice. He took a few steps back and raised his upper body up, slightly parting his arms and hissed lowly, ready to fight. Saber's eyes widened. In rage, disbelief, or in slight madness, it was unclear. He screamed and launched himself at Strider, moving to tackle him to the ground. Strider waited for the perfect moment, and when Saber was close enough, he simply snapped one leg forward, planting it squarely in the center of his opponent's chest. The forward momentum of Saber's attack was stopped dead, and he was sent flying backwards as he tumbled across the rocky earth, his limbs flailing, trying to stop himself. When he did stop, he lay on the ground drawing deep breaths. The wind had been knocked out of him, and he may have had a broken sternum. Strider simply lowered his foot back down and exhaled sharply. The fight was over, just like that. As Saber coughed on the ground, Falcon looked over Strider again, clearly impressed. They would not be bonded just yet, but she clearly saw him as a potential mate in the future. Saber struggled back up, taking long, ragged breaths, his arms held limply by his sides. He stared down Strider once again, and rage swelled within him. He took a few steps towards his opponent, but out of nowhere, Dagger jumped in front of him, his teeth bared, and the feathers on his face spread out in an expression that left no room for interpretation. It was rare to see Dagger get angry, but when it did happen, it made even Saber back up in terror. After a few moments staring down the second-in-command, Saber turned and walked away, now having been bumped down to the bottom rung of the pack. Saber had won his right to court the females of his choosing, and had become more respected in the eyes of the clan as a whole, which would also extend to his brothers. They were now officially members of the Blades Pack. There was still a long way to go for young Strider, but for now, 
the future seemed a little more clear.